Good evening, my name is Graham Goulden. I'm a former police officer from Scotland. Um, I spent the last 10 years of my policing career as a Chief Inspector working with the Violence Reduction Unit. And um, I've been meaning to, to release this, this piece um, for the last few weeks. Back in September, I wrote a blog um, highlighting um, the domestic homicides um, statistics that were released by the government. 173 people last year were killed by a partner, a former partner. 75% of these victims were female. Um, the remainder were, were men, um, and in many cases, knives were used. And I'd just like to highlight that whilst we often, society, society often looks at um, knife violence as something that happens in, on our streets and you know, between, between men and gangs, um, these victims that we're talking about from the domestic side of, of violence, um, these are often the invisible um, victims of knife crime in the UK. Maybe we need to start thinking about them as well when we when we um, you know, read the papers or watch the, the television at night. Um, we have a government in the UK who um, are claimed to be focused on prevention. We have a government who are hoping to um, increase police numbers in England and Wales by 20,000 officers. We are talking about building more prisons, more prison staff. We have a commitment to a domestic abuse bill um, through Westminster. And whilst some of this should be applauded, um, a commitment to domestic abuse. I think some of the, some of the um, releases, especially around police numbers and prison building more prisons are very short term. Uh, we really need to think about a long term prevention um, focus when it comes to um, domestic abuse in the, in the UK. Um, it's just something which I think is, is often missing from the conversation and I really think that this long-term response as well as coming from lots of the organisations across the UK that are doing fantastic work to support victims, we need to start thinking about our role. We need a societal response to um, domestic abuse, one that involves each and every one of us, um, whether we're in a professional role or whether we're in a personal role as a family member, as a friend, as a colleague. We need to start thinking about what can we be doing more to um, step up and um, do something. You know, I heard recently that um, if you see a female with a bruise on her face, it's 32 times more likely to have been caused by a domestic abuse situation. And um, whilst I accept that not all cases of a, of a bruise being on a person's face will have involved a domestic abuse situation, we ain't going to find out until we learn to ask the question. Uh, and in fact, that I've told you that part of evidence now would suggest that that's a red flag that you need to be thinking about. Um, should that should it be something you see within a, on a friend or a, a colleague or anybody that, that, that you know, maybe it's something that you should be thinking about responding to. You know, why should we um, have a societal response? You know, I think if we have a society who's more engaged, who's more aware, who's more knowledgeable on domestic abuse, um, then we will have a society who will who will naturally show more compassion to victims of domestic abuse and to survivors of domestic abuse because we have many many people out in society who have gone through domestic abuse but they still hear um, victim blaming narrative in our newspapers and our media but from friends and family and we need to start thinking about how we can be more attuned, more switched on to these issues so that we start to communicate that we care, that the only person responsible for domestic abuse is the abuser and victims have done nothing, nothing whatsoever to, um, you know, to, to, to be blamed for what, what has happened to them. Um, I think if we have a society who, who are more aware, we'll have a society with the courage to lean in to these issues, a courage to lean in if you do see that bruise on that friend's face to ask the question and um, try to eliminate that is what has um, caused that bruise in that person's face. But more awareness, I think, will lead to more leadership within within society. Um, you know, I've talked about male victims before on this on this platform, um, and we need to be aware that men men are victims of domestic abuse, and we need to um, reach out if we think that's one of our friends is um, being abused in a relationship and um, have the courage to ask the question. Again, more awareness will lead to better leadership um, in society. But that being said, I think, you know, I've talked about 75% of these homicides were committed by men um, against women. We need to start thinking about our role, guys, as leaders to start to um, set the tone 
for our for our masculinity that abuse violence of whatever kind is totally totally not acceptable within with any form of relationship and i also think by doing that we will start to set the tone for future generations because our, our sons and our daughters are learning from behavior and if our sons and daughters are learning respectful behavior in a relationship that will be good for them in the future um, we are the guideposts of our of our of our sons and daughters and i, I often get asked why? Why should I do more? You know, I, I don't abuse. Um, I'm not a victim of abuse, so why should I be doing more to um, to try and prevent domestic abuse in in society? Well, for me, really, the, the question is why wouldn't you be doing any more? So why wouldn't you want to, to help your your friends, your colleagues, um, if they find themselves in, in situations? You know, we now probably know more than we've ever done in relation to uh, the impact of trauma. And um, many of the issues that we're seeing on our streets um, across the UK, if you really start to dig deep into the young people that are causing havoc on our streets, antisocial behaviour, involved in gang violence, involved in serious youth violence, as it's often defined in the media, you know, the backstory will often be domestic abuse. You know, many, many young people are escaping families because of the abuse that's taking place. And that doesn't excuse their behaviour. And it's... It's something we need to be, be, be very mindful. But in many ways, there'll never be peace in our streets until we have peace in the home. And I, I really start to think, uh, the, the knowledge that I've learned over the last the last few years which suggests that if you're living in that violent relationship with your, with your mother or father, with your carers, parents, whatever, um, that can have an impact on, on your nature. And whilst violence is not inevitable, um, exposure to this form of violence, this form of trauma in your early years can have negative consequences in the future. So we really need to start thinking um, about what we can be doing better to um, prevent violence in um, relationships to lessen the impact on young on young children. Um, I think one of the main reasons for me is that we, when we look at these statistics, these 173 um, people who, who died last year or the 60,000 domestic abuse cases that are reported to the police annually in Scotland or the 1.9 2 million cases that are reported annually to um, the police in England and Wales behind these statistics are people we care about they are our mothers our sisters our daughters they are our friends they are our fathers they are brothers they are our best friends our best mates um, and I really think we need to start thinking about um, the people behind these statistics because surely we, that would be a good reason for us to start to step up so we can start to lessen the impact um, on um, you know on the issue to try and really make an impact on the on, the, on these homicide statistics we need we need society to be switched on to be able to to be equipped with not only the tools but with the narrative the things to say to to victims we can't rely on on governments to um, provide police you know you know give extra police numbers that's a good thing we need we need more police in our streets um we need perpetrators to be held accountable but perpetrators can be held accountable by us by society not just the law and i think it's important that if we can start to challenge behaviors before we see um, impacts in our in our homes and uh, on victims and, and children that can only be a good thing for society so i think we need to also think about our roles stepping up to situations and um, doing our bit to uh, reduce violence across the UK. So just some words for me. Thank you.